very early on in the pandemic, we realized that older adults were kind of disproportionately at risk of contracting the virus and it leading to deadly health consequences. Um, so that's made really important the, the health, the housing setting of older adults, whether they live in nursing homes or um, apartment buildings, a lot of especially HUD-assisted low-income apartment buildings that are geared towards low-income older adults um, have really struggled in this crisis. They get a lot less attention than nursing homes, but they similarly have high proportions of older adults, most of them on low income, and the buildings are often not well-funded. And so they don't have safety procedures, for example, to make sure that there are staff that um, distribute cleaning materials and make sure testing is available, things like that. They don't have, most of them didn't have procedures in place for when one resident, for example, was infected. Um, so kind of subpopulations like that have been particularly important. Um, but there's also been a, a sort of disproportionate financial impact to the crisis. BPC has done a ton of work, especially in a recent poll, that showed that there has been a disproportionate impact across the board on minority households. Um, responses to our survey showed that Black and Hispanic households in particular experienced higher job losses and pay cuts. Um, they were also more likely to tap into emergency savings and more likely to miss household payments, which include rents and utilities. Um, so those disproportionate impacts are really important considering that people of color in particular had higher housing cost burdens coming into the crisis, higher rates of housing insecurity, more likely to experience eviction and more likely to live in poverty. Uh, so when we talk about inequality coming out of the crisis, COVID-19 has actually exacerbated some of the disparities that we saw in housing. Um, and then the final thing I'll say is that uh, because staying at home was and continues to be a focus of prevention efforts, people without stable housing are disproportionately at risk. So um, there is no case more clear than um, the people who experience homelessness. They are the most vulnerable in our society. There are about 567,000 people in the United States that experience homelessness on any given night. Um, and people who are homeless have limited access to some of the preventative measures that have been recommended by the CDC and other public health officials. So obviously the big one is staying home, but there are also things we might overlook, like being able to wash your hands frequently, avoiding high touch surfaces. Um, many people who experience homelessness are also actually older than the general population. They tend to have, um, they're more likely to have underlying chronic health conditions and likely to receive services in congregate settings. So for example, um, shelters, soup kitchens, health clinics, places where it's really difficult to socially distance. Um, and all of those things combine together to make homeless populations particularly vulnerable to COVID-19.